Hello again. Either I am possessed of extraordinary psychic powers, or the BBC have become very predictable lately. I think perhaps this is one of those cases where we should apply Occam's razor and choose the simplest hypothesis which accounts for all the known facts. I say this because when I saw this morning that the BBC are boasting that they have made a new version of Great Expectations, I guessed immediately that they would be casting black people in some of the major roles. On looking at the list of characters, I see at once that the lawyer Jaggers is to be played by a Jamaican pop singer in his 30s, who goes by the nom de guerre of Bashi. Of course, he may be seen in the thumbnail to this video. His Clark Wemmick is a man of Indian heritage, and Estelle, the love interest, is played by somebody who is partly Mauritian and partly Thai. I will readily confess to viewers that I did not rely upon extrasensory perception to divide the casting for this production. It is simply that modern Britain as a whole, and the British Broadcasting Company in particular, has become drearily predictable lately. I'm not a gambling man, but I would have staked a hundred pounds on the BBC having given important roles to black people in their new production of this classic. Still, it might be argued, does it matter? Great Expectations is, after all, a work of fiction. Since it is an imaginary story, surely anything goes. Well, not really. The novel was written in the middle of Queen Victoria's reign and set a few years before she came to the throne. At that time, the only black people in Britain were sailors who were staying in lodging houses between ships, some beggars, servants and various drifters. We know this from reading Mayhew and so on and also looking at photographs of street scenes in the latter part of the 19th century. There were very few black people and they certainly didn't belong to the professional classes. None were famous barristers as Jaggers was in the book. There were, of course, rare exceptions to this general trend. A while ago, in a weak moment, I agreed to write a few guidebooks to uh, various London boroughs. Here are the ones about Kensington and Kingston. <coughs> and really, nothing to write home about, as one might say. In each case, I found one black person living in those two boroughs in the 19th century, and both were so remarkable that everyone in the area knew them. Here, for example, is um, Picton House. This is um, in Kingston-upon-Thames, and Caesar Picton was a black guy who was a former servant, and he went into business when he was freed as a coal merchant in Kingston. Because a respectable black businessman was so unusual at that time, he's remembered to this day. Here we have also, this is quite amusing and interesting. This is the Zulu king Quechua, who in 1882 lived in the same block of flats as the pre Raphaelite artist Holman Hunt. That's the guy who painted The Light of the World, a very famous painting. Now we know from what we read about Quechua living in Kensington at that time that the sight of a black man dressed in the normal fashion of a Victorian gentleman was extremely unusual in London in the 1880s, because Quechua was regularly followed about in the street by crowds of curious children, none of whom had ever seen a black man before. This is why films and television series which show black people as lawyers and so on in 19th century London are so absurd. The idea that a black man would simply be accepted in that way without remark is bizarre. If there really had been a Jamaican man practising law in the 1830s in London, then he would have been the object of huge curiosity, and like Quechua, he would have been followed about the streets by crowds of children. It is a frightful anachronism to show a Jamaican lawyer 
practice in in Victorian or pre-Victorian London and nobody noticing or saying anything about the colour of his skin. But then I suppose after Bridgerton, anything goes in this way. And most people watching this weird version of 19th century London will not realise how utterly ridiculous it is.